Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today I want to share with you how I'm getting even higher mining revenue from my LHR cards in Nightash by setting optimal benchmarks and overclock settings to mine other coins like Conflux and Ravencoin. If you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button. Stick with me, let's get started. These are my mining rigs I currently have set up running on NiceHash. And my LHR rig has been interesting to watch this week because I'm seeing it's currently running Octopus right now. Let me look into it a little bit more and I'll see that there's periods throughout the week that it's been mining on Octopus, which is really Conflux mining. And why is that? It seemed a little mysterious to me. When I jump over to sites like whattomine.com and I put in all six LHR cards from a RTX 3080 Ti, all the way down through to a RTX 3060 light hash rate. And I calculated it and I was really surprised because if I mine Ethereum on nice hash, I'm gonna be making $15.95. If I was pool mining Ethereum, I'd be making $16.74. However, scrolling down, I see that if I'm mining Octopus on nice hash, I'm gonna be making $21.12. That's a huge difference. Even if it's just momentarily, $15.95 versus $21.12. That's over $5 difference a day I would be making just by mining and making that correct algorithm switch and mining that coin when it's momentarily higher than mining Ethereum. So Ethereum is not necessarily always the most profitable coin for us to mine, especially in tools like NiceHash because we're getting paid in Bitcoin no matter what we mine. So I don't care if I'm mining Ravencoin, if I'm mining Conflux, if I'm mining Ethereum, I want the highest profitability. So for me, that's a huge difference making $21.12 a day after electric costs versus $15.95. That's quite a big jump. That would explain why in NiceHash, it's doing the automatic algorithm switching to get me the highest profitability and highest revenue. My takeaway from this video is don't just assume that Ethereum is always the most profitable coin to mine, especially on your LHR cards. Your full hash rate cards, generally it will be. You know, your light hash rate cards were usually limited to only mining about 74, 75% of the full hash rate cards. So I'm seeing times like this when coins like Conflux mining on Octopus is more profitable to mine in NiceHash than it would be for me to mine Ethereum alone. And I'm getting even higher peaks on my mining payouts. So the takeaway I'm gonna share with you for this is that spend the time and go into your benchmarks tab on your cards. When I flip over to my LHR rig, I'm remoted onto it, I can see that I have all six cards. It is mining Conflux, it's mining Octopus. Even in the nice hash miner, it's showing me NB miner, everything is Octopus. And that's because I went in and I set the benchmarks as well as overclocks specific for Ravencoin and Octopus. So that if it changes from mining Ethereum to mining another coin like Conflux, it's able to do it and adapt and put in the correct overclocks. So I'm getting the highest hash rate and efficiency I believe I can with my cards. In my experience, getting the highest mining revenue as well as efficiency out of NiceHash is making sure you have accurate numbers for your electricity costs as well as your benchmarks. Within your benchmarks, there'll be all your graphic cards that you have, whether it be one, two, five, doesn't matter, as well as it'll have a list of what are the different coins it can mine, what are the algorithms that are enabled, and what is the speed and electricity consumption. And it uses that to figure out what is the most profitable coin to mine based on its hashing orders it has. So if we take a look at our RTX 3060, this is my V2 LHR card, you'll see that most of my algorithms are disabled. So these are the different algorithms for the different miners. The only ones I have enabled right now are on NB Miner. I have Dagger Hashimoto, which is Ethereum. I have Kapow, which is Ravencoin. And I have Octopus, which is Conflux. These are the primary ones I'm gonna be mining. Up until now, if I wanted to mine a certain coin, I would have a certain set of overclocks. So maybe for coins like mining Ethereum, Ethereum is more memory intensive, less core intensive. So I would be maybe reducing my core clock speed, but yet increasing my memory to get the highest efficiency that I could on the card and the highest hash rate. However, would I want to mine coins like Conflux or Ravencoin, they're more core intensive too. So they have some ASIC resistance and other stuff to them, but 
they use more power is the bottom line and they require more corp to be able to compute them and be able to effectively mine them so i have a different set of overclocks so it's like i have a different set of tuning in the so in the past i didn't really have a one size fits all kind of try to find well most of the time you're mining ethereum probably but if you change from ethereum now you could have had maybe a negative core clock offset to mining something like ravencoin where you need that core clock so you're not mining on Raven very, very efficiently at that point. That's where the good news comes in with the latest NB miner 40.1 contains overclocking built in and NiceHash supports it seamlessly within the miner. So let's start looking at these. So for Dega Hashimoto, which is Ethereum, NB miner telling me I'm going to get 36.915 mega hash, what the profitability is expected to be. But it also knows what is the watts. So there's my benchmark speed as well as how much power consumption it's going to use. And it uses that to determine what the profitability is going to be. If it's not as profitable, is there another coin? Maybe Raven coin, maybe Conflux that it should mine as alternatives. And it's able to use the benchmark speed, power usage, as well as what the mining revenue for that specific coin is at the time to make that determination. So having accurate numbers here is really essential to getting the most efficient and optimal performance out of NiceHash. Now, we have extra launch parameters. And if you've been following our videos, this is where we normally specify values for LHR and LHR mode. So we have different LHR mode, we have LHR 74 generally, and we have some tweaks that we can apply here. But now, as we've just shown in our other video, you can do overclocking directly within NiceHash. And we've shown how to do this mining Ethereum and NB miner, as well as we also have another video where we've tested all six LHR cards and I've shared my best overclock settings with you. Hopefully that can give you some guidance of what I got. Maybe you can use that and even get higher from there. We have some overclocking parameters in addition to LHR being specified here, but we're not gonna be focusing on Ethereum today because we've covered them pretty in depth in the other videos. Let's start looking at other coins which is Kapow and Octopus. To get some guidance for overclock settings for Ravencoin, I went into NiceHash and I actually found they have a document under their blog. I'll be putting a link down below for your convenience, but this is Ravencoin, Kapow, Nvidia, and AMD overclock settings. Then here, they also have for all the different graphic cards ranging from RTX 3090 all the way down through RTX 2080s, GT 1660. For all these different cards, they have the overclock settings. So this was a great starting place for me to use to see, well, if I'm gonna be mining other coins like Ravencoin, what are some decent overclocks to use? So I use this kind of as a template and I tweak the numbers a little bit that seem to work a little bit better with my cards. And I came up with my own matrix. So within there, I have the values that I would apply right into those extra large parameters. I'm purposely specifying a locked core clock of zero. And that seems to me to be a fix to work around if the core was previously locked when I was mining coins like Ethereum, it's not going to unlock automatically. And that seems to be a current issue with NB miner that when you start it and you set it into go to locked core clock, when the miner exit, it doesn't stop the locked core. So it still keeps that locked core clock in place by specifying this core clock of at zero. It resets the core clock and kind of disables it again. And then I can start passing in new overclocking parameters. So I have a power limit of 70%, core clock offset of plus 100, and a memory clock of 950. And that matches what you're seeing in the very top row of the screen for my 3060 V2, because these are the overclocks that I passed in for that card. The best part is, is that these overclocks that I'm using for Ravencoin seem to work equally well too when I'm mining coins like Conflux. If I scroll down to Octopus, which is Conflux, you'll see I'm applying the same overclock settings. So when the miner is running, it'll apply the appropriate settings for the overclock. If it switches which is then between Ethereum mining and Ravencoin mining, and then maybe back to Ethereum. Every time the miner stops and restarts, it should choose the appropriate overclocks for that algorithm, giving me the highest hash rate, best efficiency, and hopefully the highest mining revenue. This chart of these different values that I've put together with the core clock offsets and values, I'm actually gonna be pasting this below in the description. This is not specific for LHR cards, since Ravencoin and Conflux are not hampered by LHR technology. Everything is, should be considered full hash in that case. On the right side of my grid up top, you'll notice I'm sharing my hash rates, my water, as well as my efficiency. I have a lot more experience mining coins like Ethereum than I do with coins like Raven and Conflux. So if you have some suggestions, 
that you could offer me, I would love to hear them. And maybe we can improve on this and we can then share this in our community. I've applied these overclocks to my LHR rig, which has six LHR cards. However, since they're mining Kapow, which is Ravencoin, there should be no effect of, given that it's LHR. So the overclocks that I'm displaying in the matrix above, I'm gonna be putting them in the description below for you to examine yourself. This is my mining results. So everything from the 3060 Ti all the way through my 3080 Ti card. I'm using the same overclocks that I just used for Ravencoin, except now I'm using them to mine on Octopus. I'm mining Conflux. So I just wanted to share my mining experience with you on my six LHR cards to give you some gauge of what the numbers are. You can see what my power numbers are as well as all the status messages that are coming across so you can use them maybe as some reference to compare to for your own again i'm not a pro i'm just a really big crypto enthusiast so please be cautious and do your own research with your overclocks but i welcome any suggestions or input that you have and hopefully we can improve these values even further and share it on our channel for everyone Seeing the increased mining revenue in NiceHash told me that the choice I made to specify those extra overclock settings as well as be very precise with my benchmarks is well worth it because when there's times like coins like Conflux or even Ravencoin, when they may push up or rally, that's one of the things I like about NiceHash is that it can make that determination and it can make the appropriate choice to mine and get the highest profitability possible. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up like smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. We welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Until next time, see you on the next video. Happy mining!